Hi, I'm Clever Ghoul, but you can call me Nikki. Welcome back to the channel. This week, we're doing a project that I've been wanting to do for a really, really long time. I'm talking years. We're making a taxidermied bat. Now, when I say that, I want to be really clear. This is a fake taxidermy project. No animals are harmed in the process. And I also know this isn't the most original idea in the world that people have done it. But what can I say? I just really needed to get it out of my system. This all came to a head this week when I saw this wonky birdcage on sale at Michael's and I knew that I just had to finally do this project. I really had no idea what I was doing and I, I kind of had to wing it. Yeah, uh -huh. Wait, wing it? Anyway, like usual, I have no idea what I'm doing, but that's never stopped me. So let's get into it. Now, here's the cage. As you can see here, it's got a bunch of chips and scratches in it. There's chunks of material missing. So to fix some of the deeper divots, I took some hot glue and smoothed it in to kind of fill out the cracks. And then anywhere else where it wasn't too bad, I just kind of let it go. From there, I took it outside and using some gold spray paint, covered the whole thing so that it was one even cohesive color. Then while the cage was drying, I came back inside and decided to start making the base of the bat. I used some crumpled up craft paper and foil to make the body of the bat, which is essentially a teardrop shape since it's gonna be hanging up upside down. And then from there, I made a little round head with a little tiny, teeny, tiny snout on it and took some 18 gauge wire, shoved it in one end of the bat with hot glue and then shoved it into the other and hot glued and just secured the whole piece together. Now to make the ears, I didn't want to spend a lot of time sculpting anything. I figured out the perfect base for these ears. I took two lobster claw jewelry clasps, took the wide part at the bottom and glued them to the base of the head to make these teardrop or conical shaped ears that just worked out perfectly for this bat. Once I had the base of the bat, ready to go. I took out some armature wire, cut it, and started to make some ridges where the arms and elbows and like little hands of the bat would be where the wings are, just to get a rough shape of how I wanted the wings to sit. Once I had that basic shape down, I took out hot glue and craft paper and just made a base all around the wings just to get it going before I jumped into my paper mache mode. Now, if you've been with me here before, you know that the way I paper mache isn't really the way that you necessarily have to do it, but I just take some Mod Podge and a little bit of water and mix it together and that's how I make my paste. So I basically basically paper mache with Mod Podge all around the base. I did multiple layers and in between layers, I would hit it with a hair dryer, really just so I could speed up the timing and get to painting. I also did the same paper mache process on the nose and the ears, just so that those had a nice base because those are gonna be the only part of the face that is not covered in fur. Next, it was time to start painting. I started with brown to tone the base of the wings. Then I moved on to a warm gray and dry brushed that on to add in some more texture and some more depth. And then from there, I lightly sponged in some black and would blot it with a paper towel just to add in some shadow and some texture into the wing. I also painted the nose and the ears here, just flat black. I didn't add any texture to it because it's really gonna be surrounded by fur and doesn't need that much detail. Once the paint was dry, it was time to add in the fur. I used loops and thread faux fur yarn. Basically what I would do is I would cut off a piece, take some hot glue, pour the hot glue into the bat under the wings and around the head, and then wrap the yarn around. Once it was all in a good place and it was something I liked, I took out some little snips and gave them a little haircut so it wasn't just one bulbous chunk of fur and instead was more tailored and looked like an actual bat. From there, it was time to move on to the eyes. I knew I wanted to use beads because I wanted a 3D look, but also have a little bit of sparkle going. Now, at first I thought, yes, I will use bright red beads, but it was starting to look a little bit more like Mothman. And I love Mothman, but that wasn't the vibe that I was going for. So I, instead I went with these purpley gray toned beads for the eyes. From there, it was time to actually make the branch that the bat is going to hang on. So I took some armature wire and foil, crumpled it all together and layered it over and over again with hot glue. This is just a really quick and easy way to make a tree branch if you want to. Yes, it does use a lot of hot glue, but it's faster than doing Sculpey or doing paper mache and time is of the essence. Once the hot glue had set on that aluminum branch that I just made, I covered it first in a dark warm gray paint, let that dry, then went in with a golden honey sort of color paint, dry brushing that on so that some of the dark gray would pop through. And then lastly, I took a sponge brush and some brown paint and again, just lightly dabbed all over the branch and then would sponge it either with my fingers or with a paper towel to help smooth it out. I do all this to make the branch look more realistic and have more depth and tone into it so it doesn't just look like a brown plastic stick sitting in the middle of this thing. Once the paint was dry on the branch, I added in some moss on any area 
areas where there were holes or anything that needed to be covered up. And now for the trickiest part, I wanted to attach this bat to this branch and I wasn't sure how to do it. At first I was thinking maybe a black pipe cleaner to give it like furry little feet, but they don't really have furry feet. So instead I took the 18 gauge wire, cut a piece, looped it around the branch and the two dangling pieces at the bottom, twisted them together a little bit, put some hot glue on it and stuck it into the bottom of the paper mache part of the bat. And then I took some black acrylic paint and painted over those wires so that they just blended in with everything else. To finish the project, I didn't want this branch to just be sticking out of a metal bird cage. So instead I covered the base with hot glue and moss and then glued down the branch, which means it's time for the reveal. Here it is. I'm so, so pleased with how this turned out. When I was finished, I actually took a picture of it and sent it to a friend. And her response to me was that it was scary. And then she asked me, where did I happen to get a taxidermied bat? She thought this was real. So I think it's a very successful project. I think if you didn't know and you just saw this on the shelf, you might think it was just another oddity that someone would have in their house. But no, it's a paper mache and yarn bat. It's mostly actually aluminum foil and glue, but I am so, so happy with it. Honestly, now I kind of just want to make vegan taxidermy for the rest of my life. This was so much fun. I love bats, they're my favorite pollinator and I'm just so happy to have one in my home now. I had so much fun with this project this week. Like I said, I've been wanting to do it for so long and the fact that it came together so well and was so successful is just wow, chef's kiss. I'm so happy. If you were gonna make a vegan taxidermy project, <laughs> Oh my God, what would you make? Like I said, I think I could make a million more of these, not just bats, but other projects. So we'll probably see more down the line on this channel, but I'd love to hear in the comments below what you would like to try and take a stab at. So let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.